to invite um Victoria to take over. Over to you. Hello. Mm. Everybody show support to Victoria today. Like Hi, Victoria. Mm -hmm. yeah. You do good today. Victoria, why is you why why, you, why am I not seeing your face? What is oh. this? Better. All right. All right. Please show support for Vicky. Turn on, turn on your camera, you people. Uh -uh. We don't see all of you. Support your girl now. Let us see what she's teaching. It's not fair. You are saying good luck, Finn. Instead of you to support your turn on your camera. Hmm? We cannot even see her face. So I mean I know, right? She, she, she's 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 using my background on like. I need to see what who is talking to me. If you are not seeing who I'm talking to, then it is it's going one way, coming out that way. Hello. Hey, Vicky. Okay. So, Romance Nine. Okay. Yes. I'm half ready. Uh -huh. Um. Yes. So, God's selection of Israel. In Romans 8, Paul's primary focus is on God's spirit and his love, but in Romans 9, his focus shifts to the problem of the Jews. To me, it's almost like he's telling us what who God truly is, uh, like before condemning the hypocrites and those who think they're in the right but are actually in the wrong. Okay, so verses 1 to 5. Can someone read it for us, please? I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were caused and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs the divine glory, the covenant, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs is the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. Okay, thank you. Um, so here, basically, Apostle Paul is letting us know that he would rather be cursed than for the Jews to be taken away from Christ. Any comments? Okay. Um, so, I think that is an odd statement to say. I think that is a very, very odd statement. But the fact that he said it means shows how, like, um, how much he believed in, um, he, and he wanted the Jews to be saved. That's what I think. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, verses six to thirteen. Anyone want to read? Thank you, Tiffany. Go ahead. It is not us, though God's word, God's word had failed. For not all who are descended from Israel are Israel, nor because they are descendant are they of Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is it is true Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it is not the it is not the children by physical descent who who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the spirit for this was how the promise was stated at the appointed time I will return and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebecca's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet before the twins were born, we had anything good or bad. In order, in order, in order that God's purpose in election might stand, not by works, but by him who caused, she was told. The older we serve, the younger. Just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Israel I hated. Okay, thank you. Verses six to nine lets us know that not everyone from Abraham's lineage is. Israel, technically, and that it is from the promise that God gave to Abraham, which is Isaac, that the nation will come out from. 
10 to 13 further explains that uh, although Jacob and Esau are both sons of Isaac, God chose to favor Jacob. 14 to 18. Are we saying then that God was unfair? Of course not. For God said to Moses, I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. So is it God who decides to show mercy? We can neither sh choose it nor work for it. For the scriptures say that God told Pharaoh, I have appointed you for the very purpose of displaying my power in you and to spread my fame throughout the earth. So you see, God chooses to show mercy to some and he chooses to harden the hearts of others so they refuse to listen. So um, Paul further explains that God chooses to, wait, okay, that because God chose to favor Jacob does not mean that he's unjust. Romans 9, 15, for God said to Moses, I will choose to show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. Acts 10, 34. Can someone read that verse, please? Okay, I'll read. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. God shows no favoritism. So you see, God can have mercy on some and harden others' hearts. Romans 19 to 21. More than, you might say, why does God blame people for not responding to this? Haven't they simply done what he makes them do? No, don't say that. Who are you, a mere human being, to argue with God? Should the thing that was created say to the one who created it, why have you made me like this? When a potter makes jars out of clay, does he, doesn't he have the right to use the same lump of clay to make a jar for decoration and the other to throw garbage into. Any thoughts on this? Uh -uh. Who is, why are you not talking? Tosin, how far? I'll call names. I am fair. Queen Esther. He said, any thoughts? Yeah, on this scripture. Um, not really. So what do you what do you think it means? Like when you're saying that it's it's self. It, I I think you say that it's self-explanatory, right? Yeah. But what what scripture would you say that kind of like talks about this again too? <laughs> like another scenario another scripture in the bible um, you knowing jeremiah it says before i formed thee i knew thee he said you to get him for this purpose too yeah and also in jeremiah they talked about the potter and what God does. God is a God is the potter, and He forms things out of clay. And what He does is that He can form you, and He's the person that formed you. So if you need to know your identity, you go to meet God. And also, likewise, God has His own decision over everything. He He can He makes that choice. Um, you have a scripture there, Deuteronomy chapter thirty, verse nineteen. Um, where yeah. Yes, I feel like that verse just explains this part on okay. how God gives us our own choice. Hmm. I can read it. It says, today, I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. 
Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you should choose a life so that you and your descendants might live. So, mm. last, last, everything will go according to God's will. Okay, Romans nine twenty two to 24. Can someone please read it for us? Go ahead. In the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and his power, is very patient with those on whom his anger fell, falls, who are destined for destructions. He does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those to whom he shows mercies. We were prepared in advance for glory, and we are among those whom he selected, both from the Jews and the Gentiles. Do you have any comments on that? Um, from just reading it now, I think it's just talking about like God like just does everything out of his glory and mercy and um is very patient with like even though like anything happens is still like God and stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yes, I mean here it just lets us know that God has all rights to anger, but he's patient with us and he just lets us pick our choice. Brian Manuel, do you have anything to say? No, oh, continue. I'll, I'll, add, um, I'll add to it later. Okay. So this is where I start to get confused, actually. So one second, please. So verse 25 to 33 is starting to give us more about Israel's unbelief. And I'm just going to read them. Concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, those who are not my people, wait, give me a second. Okay. Okay. So, and among those who he said, like, okay, yes. Concerning the Gentiles, God says in the profess, prophecy of Hosea, those who were not my people, I will now call my people. And I will love those who, whom I did not love before. And then at the place where they were told, you are not my people. They will be called children of the living God. And concerning Israel, Isaiah the prophet cried out, Those, though the people of Israel are as numerous as the sand of the seashore, only a remnant will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth quickly and with finality. And Isaiah said the same thing, in another place, if the Lord of heaven, if the Lord of heaven's armies had not spared a few of our children, we would not have been wiped out like Sodom. We would have been wiped out like Sodom, destroyed like Gomorrah. What does all this mean? Even though the Gentiles were not trying to follow God's standards, standards, they were made right by God, and it was by fits that this took place. But the people of Israel who tried so hard to get it right with God by keeping the law never succeed, succeeded. Why not? Because they were trying to get right with God by keeping the law instead of trusting him. They stumbled over the great rock in their paths. God warned them of this in the scriptures when he said, I am placing a stone in Jerusalem that makes people stumble a rock that makes them fall, but anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. So in all, Romans 9 is very self-explanatory, like right here, where it talks about how the people of Israel who tried so hard to keep God's law never succeeded because they did not trust him. So I think one of the big takeaways I got from 
this chapter is that we should always trust God. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you so much. That was very um, apt and very, very straight to the point. Oh, I thought we we're going to be here for, for for a bit, but Victoria just, just like, thank you so much. God bless you, and Victoria. Thank you so much for going over the scripture. I I, I find it like um, wonderful that you that you obeyed and you listened and you went through the word. So okay. So does anybody have any question or anything that stood out to them from this um, chapter nine? Because chapter nine is a whole different verse. Um, if you remember, okay, tough I'll, I'll you, you get your turn soon. So if you remember, um, let me just explain this. We talked about the four categories of romance. We talked about the first, um, the first three chapters of romance. We're talking about the, the, the wrath of God, like God's anger towards man, and how we spoken about in romance. Then the next five chapters, we're talking about God's, um, God's grace. God's grace, the grace he has for us, this grace that is abundant. We said, you know, we talked about what can separate us from the love of God. We talked about his abundant grace that as sin became, as sin increased, his grace increased also. We talked about that. Now we are in the part where we are talking about God's plan. God's plan. It starts from, it starts from chapter 9 to chapter 11, I believe, God's plan. So that's what we're talking about right now. And God's plan is basically just like, what is the purpose? Like it, it's trying, it's trying, trying to give you an understanding of why are things like this? It's trying to explain things for you. Why is it that first they were Israelites, then they were Gentiles? God's promise was to the Israelite, but the Israelites, a lot of them, even up to now, a lot of them ignore the, the what Jesus Christ represents as the Messiah, what Jesus Christ represents as the the only true way to god they ignore it because they had their own perception of what the messiah was even though jesus is coming fulfilled all the scriptures he fulfilled like they talked about the fact that the fulfillment of the prophecies that jesus did is it's it's like there is no possibility that those things will happen coincidentally coincident tally like he fulfilled the scripture so like big that it's not a coincidence it didn't just fulfill like one or two prophecy. If you feel like, I think about hundreds or so of, of prophecy, and still, a lot of people are still like, "Oh, it can't be the Messiah," because we have perceptions of of how we expected him to be. So now, actually, I find something while I talk about this, and my my own thoughts would be like, "What? Where, where in your life have you like had?" perception of how god was going to answer your prayer maybe you had a pray you have a, a burden you have a challenge you pray to god you know he answers prayer but you had this idea of how you how you thought god was going to answer your prayer so when god now actually answers your prayer sometimes you don't even realize that you, he has answered that prayer so it's it's really big with us we all have, we all have this um idea imagination of how we think our answer prayer should look like uh, how we think our life should look like and we don't see we don't we don't see the god factor in how it turns out we don't see like when it actually turns out for good we don't even realize that god did it but that's on the side though um but i just want you to think about that so it's the same thing with the israelites they have a desire to meet the messiah they have the perception of god when the messiah actually came in the flesh they it was there for all to see. It was something. They said the, the Bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among us, and we behold his glory. The glory as the as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. But they did not know he was the one. It's a sad um realization. But this is what Paul begins to talk about. So now, what about the Israelites? What about the people that we are saying that they are sort of cast away? Where do they stand? How are they important? He begins to tell you the plans that this promised nation called the Jews have in the word of God. What was God's plan? God doesn't do anything half done. Why was Israelites, why was the Jews, why were they chosen first? He explains that. Why were they chosen first before the rest of the world? Why was it through them that the gospel came to the world? Why is Jesus from their lineage? This is what the scripture explains. Why is it that the, um, the first 
the first um how do I say this? I'll just say it the way I feel it. The first um Abraham family, why why is it that it wasn't in um, Nigeria or in um what's it called? Or in um South Africa or in um West Indies or in Asia, China. This scripture kind of explains some of it and it gives you a perspective of what God's plan is for us, for the Jews, for everybody, for everybody on earth. That's what it, it explains. So, so far, T, over to you, bro. You had the uh, contribution. Yeah, I already said everything I was saying now. Seriously? Yeah, well, if I add anything, it's just that, like, the scripture just shows like how sovereign God is that you cannot question him that he chooses to do whatever he wants for whatever reason like some people will say oh why is there still evil if God can just like wipe everything away and it's God that chose to give us our wills he's the one that chose to give us free will so it's up to him to do whatever he wants that's why he has the right to be angry or not he just he does whatever pleases him that's why he gives mercy to some, he doesn't give mercy to some, he forgives some easily, he doesn't forgive some easily. It's because it's God. He doesn't have to live by any rule or any um regulation. He's God and that's just thank you, sir. So far I to pretty much continued from where I stopped. And um all I'm gonna do is just give context and um, understanding to the scriptures that we read today um she has she has really um it's a point there victoria talked about the trust that we have to have in god i think that was one thing that was powerful for me like the trust that we have to have in god so now where does election come in election is a thing that god does does god elects people um why is election important because we are all christians we are loved by god we are all children of god and when it comes to, I don't say but, I say and, when it comes to the way God does something, he always chooses someone to direct. There's always a need for someone to lead. There's always a need for someone to be up there. And when you understand leadership, you would know that a leader is is, is someone that serves. When, um, when I think, um, I think it was Peter and his brother, I think James, or Peter and his, Peter and James' mom or something, when they came to ask good Jesus, because people had, like I tell you, people had conception of what they mean. Like, like during that time, the Israelites were under the yoke of the Roman Empire. So they basically thought that um, when the Messiah came, it was going to like overrule and overthrow the, the, the government. Because the, the, Isaiah said, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. So they're like, oh, it's upon his shoulder. So he's going to overthrow pew, everything. But they didn't know that this man was going to come in flesh, born to the son of a carpenter in a manger. Like, how, how, why is the Messiah not born in the palace? Like, that's the, the that's what we expect. That's what we see. That's what we, you would notice. But that's not what happened. What happened was that when Jesus came, he came in a manger. He was born in a manger. He came as a Nazarene. It's like they said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He came from Nazareth, from the lowest of the lows, and he became the Messiah. So, so a lot of people didn't expect that. They thought that it was going to be like, like some guy that uh, was from the royal family, was going to raise an army, destroy the Roman Empire, be the next... Um, uh, what was what was a really great um commander? I'm trying to remember this guy. Anybody give me any name? Somebody from the from around Jesus' time that was oh Alexandra the Great. They thought they thought it was gonna be like Alexandra the Great and rule over this. And funny enough, all these things that they expect is gonna happen. And God told the Bible tells us so that when Jesus comes after the after the rapture, after the the seven years of tribulation. Is going to come back and it's going to rule and reign on upon this earth and the government will be on his shoulder but you have to have realized that before that time there was a foreshadowing a lot of israel israelite did not realize the foreshadowing that came with jesus coming on earth the thing that really changed our lives completely they did not realize that so back to the story peter and james they came to jesus and they asked them how can we be on your side like we want to be 
on top we want to be in charge like they came to jesus like we want to be in charge their mom also came as like i want my sons to be in charge how can we make this to happen and i don't know if it's peter and john it might be it might be peter and, it might be john and james it might be missing up but jesus literally answered answered them and said that the greatest among you must be a servant so i want you to understand that leadership so that is what leadership means in um in, in christianity and in the kingdom of god let's say in the kingdom of god for everything i say in the kingdom of god so the other thing we're talking about election god chooses people first off god chose noah out of everybody because of his art god saw, god saw something in noah and he chose him and he saved his family from the flood then many years later god chose the family of abraham he chose abraham and his family now think about it abraham had two children but god had one promise god said that from your um from your offspring shall this in the inhabit the inhabitants of this earth like the people of this earth will be blessed from your offspring that was a promise that god gave abraham he said he said not because they are descendants are they all abraham's children on the contrary it is those isaac that it is it is true isaac that your offspring will be reckoned so god told him that it was true isaac isaac was a son of promise though there was ishmael the promise of christ coming and the promise of um of the israelites the promise of the jews and the promise that god made was upon isaac so god chose isaac and not ishmael let's now continue Isaac now. Isaac had two sons. Anybody remind anybody can remember the sons, the sons of Isaac, please. Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. He had two sons, Jacob and Esau. And God chose one of them. God elected Jacob. Who was the second son? To be the promise, the child of promise. The Bible says that Esau, I hate Jacob, I love. God elected Jacob. And from Jacob, there were 12 tribes of Israel. And that is how Israelites started. Is it that God did not want many children? God wanted many children, many like many kids. Like he said, multiply. He's in he's involved in multiplication. But why is it that he chooses? Because they, they tell us this that he says that he says that he says that um he says he does as he pleases. He, he says that um I'm trying to find it. He says that. I'm trying to find that scripture. He said, he said, I will have mercy upon who I will have mercy upon. That's what he said. I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy upon. He elects. God does as he pleases. He, he's, he, he does as he is omnipotent. It's all powerful. That is his way. He does as he pleases. So we have to understand that God elects people and we cannot question him. That is what is the next part of the scripture is talking about. Who are we to question God? Who are we to question God? Because He is the Potter. He is the one that formed us. Who? I can you think about it? Like think about it. Some, sometimes you have to reflect upon this and see your life. Like when when you are for those who are coding, and I'm just going to use coding because that's what came to mind. For those who are coding, when you write a code, whether it works or it does not work, is in your hand. Would the code come and tell you, yeah, the reason why I'm not like I don't know. Let me see if I can find another analogy. But you guys, I'm sure you guys understand understand what I mean. Like when you are drawing something, maybe you are drawing a picture. Is it is it is it is it the drawing's fault that it is not fine? No, it is your your it is it is your sketch that makes it not fine. It is your choice. So I want us to reflect back, so I don't lose you don't lose your train of thought thought from the analogy. What I'm just trying to say is that it is the potter that chooses the design of the clay. It is the potter that molds the clay. It's the potter that chooses the form of the clay. It is the potter that chose that you would have legs, you would have hands that walk. That walk. Some people don't have hands and legs that walk. It's the potter that intended it. So God is the potter. He designs things the way he wants it to be. He does as he pleases. He elects one forgo the other and he lets another one forgo the other he does as he pleases he has his own will and he chooses it he chooses to use it as he pleases and we can't question him because he's omnipotent he's all-powerful 
he created us so that is that's that so you we have to understand the sovereignty of god like a lot of people try to undermine god and it's it is part of our human nature we 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 usually tend to ignore how powerful god is like if you really try to imagine how powerful god is i promise you it's sometimes you it might seem very scary very scary but the reason why it's not scary is that he loves us you you now can imagine somebody that is all powerful that is so sovereign he still chooses to give us a will of our own does it not indicate that he actually loves you he's that powerful he molded you he designed you and when he designed you he said he was good and he still gave you he, they say he breached life onto you and he gave you will he gave you the will to choose he gave you the will to choose. He shows that in all his sovereignty, he has love for you, where he gives you the ability to make decisions yourself. But when it comes to questioning God, you do not have a right because he does as he pleases. As you do as you please, he does as he pleases. Only difference is sovereign. He is all powerful. He is all powerful. He says, um, I don't know, does anybody have any question, contribution? Before I continue, okay, I feel that you guys are following. Then, okay, I'm trying to see what other scriptures like we should look at. Um, yeah, I was talking about the Potter. Um, verse 22 say, "What if God, although choosing to show His wrath and make His power known, bore with great patience the object of His wrath prepared for destruction? Say, what if?" He did this to make the riches of his glory known to the object of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory. So Paul is answering questions. The way Paul writes is that he comes up with a question indicative of maybe what you are thinking. Like sometimes, like I pray as the Holy Spirit keeps moving, sometimes it pops into my heart some of the questions that might be going through your head. That's the power of God. It just pops in my mind and I'll be saying things that reflect to what you are thinking right now or what is going through your mind. It is the power of God moving and it's moving right now so he says that what eve is now is not answering the question he says maybe it's, 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 it's just making a, a like just a general statement it's like say what if he did this what if god chose us chose to to do all this thing where he created you where he made you as clay where 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 where, where he chose that okay irrespective of everything that is happening there is a day of judgment that is set before you yes i gave you will to choose yes i'm sovereign i gave you will i could have chosen not to give you will look at the animals out there i did not give them will to choose but i gave you will to choose but still there is a set day for destruction and it is your decision that would um that would dictate where you end up in but in that that what if god did all these things just to show is the object of it just to show the riches of his glory because one thing that you know that god is rich and god is rich in mercy but god is very rich in mercy is he is, did he do all this so that he should he should boast of his riches to the object of his mercy like you guys are we all are objects of god's mercy like we are vessels that are that have been that god has been merciful unto us is is he just doing all this so that he can show his riches and sure he might be doing this and what he has in what he has in plan for us he says the plan that i have for you are for, are, are for good to give you a future and expect and, and not of evil everything he has for us is good and is what he has for us in store is to give us glory to be to be prepared in advance for glory that is what his plan is for everybody and if i'm not explaining this well i pray god will give us more understanding as we keep going maybe we'll, we'll crash back on this but what i'm trying to explain to you is that everything god does for us is for our good everything he does for us is for our good when he made man he made it he made that he made us good when the devil came as a serpent in genesis i don't know for those who have started their bible in the year plan and i encourage anyone to start either you start a bible in the year plan or a new testament or just a scripture please make sure you're reading your bible daily for those who have started genesis you are reading the serpent story again and it's just like super fascinating like myself i read it today and it was super fascinating and it's just like it's just like god made everything good and the serpent came and deceived the woman and the woman the and the woman and the man fell and that's 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 basically what happens but he, 
everything he has prepared was for his glory and for God's glory. He said, he said even us whom he also called, not only for, from, from the Jews, but also from the Gentiles. So if you can remember, Paul said that he would love for all the Jews to know God, to believe in God. But it is not all Jews that know God. So now what's the challenge? What is God's plan? We're going to see it more in verse 10. So the truth is that it's not all the Jews that have accepted God, like I said before. And the reason why they did not accept God is because they are working, they, they, they think about everything in works. They are all, they're always trying to work it out, work it out. You know, some people be trying to work it out, work it out all their days. But have you, have you, have you thought about it? Like, God, please work this out. Like, God, work this out. Like, God, God, work this out. It's like, this is what they basically did. The Israelites were like, I want to, they, they knew the law. They knew the, they knew everything. They were elected. They were like chosen. They, they knew everything. And they decided to work it out instead of having faith in God having faith in Jesus, the son of God, that through him, they will be saved. They felt like they could work it out. And in their own area of working out, they, they fell more. They fell short. And the funny thing is that, the funny thing is that it's like Jesus was there for them. Jesus was right there for them. He came in flesh. He was born from their descendants. He has chosen them. So, all they had to do is just to believe in Jesus, that is the Son of God, and they will be saved. But they all wanted to work it out. And that is where they went wrong. And what now happened was that they didn't realize that the criteria for election was now different. Let's say you are running for the presidency for, for your classroom, like like um to be a president in your classroom or class captain. I don't know what they, they call it over here in your classes, but leader of your classroom. Maybe the criteria before was you have to have at least B's in your class grades for you to be recognized, to be elected. Now, so you went to that factor, I have B's, I have B's, man, I have B's. No, I think maybe you don't even have B's, you have A's. Like the, the criteria was that you have to have at least B's, but you're like, oh, I have A's, I have A's. So therefore, like, they should appoint me as a class president, like the top student in my class, man, they should appoint me as a class president. And, God give me understanding. And there is another person that also running for this, but he doesn't have A's like you have A's, but the criteria says B's. Okay, I have B's, but I have something else. What do I have other than that? I am nice. Maybe, and this is, let's not represent this as what the Bible is saying, but I'm just trying to make a, like a clear analogy. It says, your own, your own gift is that you are nice. So this person's a top scorer in your class. And you are very nice, and you know people. People are like people would people love you, and you only have bees. Who do you think is going to be chosen? It's the person I believe is the person people love. What do you guys? What do you guys think? Anybody can go ahead. Like the A is it the top scorer or the person people like in the class that will get chosen? Anybody? I want um, the, the people. people. Yes, the person that people like. Yes, that is the person that will get chosen. So it is at this point, it's no longer by by just your grade. It's not it's not by your works. That's the, the, the point I want to make. It is by election. It is by by choice. It is and the person that is making this choice is God. So God has now detected that it is not by works, by but by faithfulness, by those who have faith in God, by those who have faith in Jesus, that would receive salvation that will receive eternal life and that is that's why they say that now the people that believe so much in works the existence of jesus born to their own tribe born to their own family has become a stumbling block unto them because they are not reading the instructions properly anymore they missed it so there is something that is falling them down they keep falling. They keep falling. They can't meet. They can't. They can't get to the finish line. There's something that just keeps stripping them, because they have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So Paul knows this. Paul is a Jew, and Paul is crying out on behalf of his people. That's why. Why? Why is it that these people that are so zealous, these people, these are the people that will fast and pray. These people are people that will work hard. They will do everything, but they have, they have, they are missing one thing, one thing, just that one thing. 
have you haven't you felt that how do you feel when you have 89.9 percent and that one that zero point one percent it is the reason why you are not getting an a how does that feel it feels painful that is how paul saw these people that they they do they are zealous for god they, they pursue it but what they are looking what they are chasing after is works and not faith that they have that's why since they say the gospel is is simple the gospel is true the gospel is not complicated is john 3 16 believe in god you'll be saved and those works will follow like those works will follow as long as you choose to believe in god those works that you think you, you is is wrong will actually energize you it will follow but you just have to believe in God. That's they were shut off the mark, so that became a stumbling block for them. So this nine is not is an, is an incomplete is is quite incomplete without ten. Without ten, it's quite incomplete because ten makes you realize God's plan for the Israelites. It is in ten that you begin to realize that all hope is not lost for God's first elect. All hope is not lost for God's chosen people. God does not abandon His own. God always makes places for escape. So now let's talk about let's talk about God in His in His in His in His amazing and powerful things. God doesn't want you to end up in hellfire. God will do everything for your soul to be saved. He will do everything, every single thing. He will save you. He will preserve you. That is why he's patient for everybody. Why do evil things still happen if God is sovereign? Because he is patiently, patiently waiting for everybody to have a chance to get to know God, to get to know him. He is patient in his love. He is, if you remember, we read this in Romans chapter 1, where he says that he is just patient. He is just waiting. I'm trying to see if I can find that scripture. That the, he's not, he's not, he's not confused. He's just so that everybody would enjoy the fullness of his grace. But when that day comes, when that time comes, if you're not on the Lord's side, that is it. The end is hellfire. That's the end. It's the fact of it. So it's very important that we know that God is merciful. God, I promise you, God would do anything to save anybody. Listen to people's testimonies. Hear how God delivers the most wretched person you can think of. How God delivers them when they have true unique deliverance. It is between them and God. God delivers them completely. Look at your life for those who can see their life. Look at your life. See how God has delivered you. Me, like when 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 pastor was like during New Year's, when pastor was like, those who have a, is it New Year's or I can't remember, maybe it was Sunday or watch night when when pastor was talking about people that have experienced spiritual growth in the year 2022 i came out because i knew who i was before I, I, i'm not confused i know i know i know myself and i know what god has done in my life so god will do everything to save you do you know do you know do you know i'm going to i'm going to say some things here that you would you would um okay all right i got some questions what okay all right so we're going to answer that question I'm going to say some things right now. Oh, somebody asked a question. Why does he not reveal himself to unbelievers? He reveals himself through us. We are the word, we are the mouthpiece that God uses to touch unbelievers. Um, Victoria, you have a you want to answer that question too? Well, yes. I was gonna say that I remember something I saw earlier this well, late last year. Um, so a preacher was talking about how he was looking for his child and he kept asking people to help him. And then he refers that to how God uses his saved children to get his missing children. Hmm. 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 Oof, that is powerful. Wow. Thank you so much for that. So God uses us. We have the message that God uses to find these people why does god not reveal himself to other people we don't understand that that when god works he doesn't just save one person he saves millions of people through one person god did reveal himself to an unbeliever he, re he revealed himself to paul 
And Paul is blessing our life right now. When God reveals himself, he, he saves millions of people. There are some people that have gotten the revelation of God. And that is their, that is their own fortune. That is their own blessing. I'll use the word blessing instead of fortune. That is their own blessing. And God does reveal himself to unbelievers. Have you, have you not heard Muslims that get converted from like, from like something, they just receive God, like they receive revelation. So God reveals himself to unbelievers. But the greatest way God reveals himself to them is through you, brothers and sisters. It's through me. It's through each and every one of us. That is how God reveals himself. Through the, those who have chosen him, through those who have chosen to be saved. That is how God reveals himself. So now on the quest, on the topic of what God will do for you to be saved. That unbeliever, I promise you, as long as God lives, they will have opportunity, many opportunities for themselves, for their lives, where they will hear God, where they will know about God, where they will find time, where they will, they will find God. And it's up to them, up to them to choose. In the end of things, in the end of it all, they, it is up to their will. But seeing God will not reveal themselves to them, God will reveal themselves. He's revealing them, he's revealing, he's revealing himself to them through you right now as we speak. You are ambassadors of Christ. And God will do whatsoever it is for you to be saved. He will do whatsoever it is. He said, what can separate us from the love of God? Shall it be death or life, angels or demons? What can separate us? He said, nothing. He said, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Nothing. He said, I am convinced that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. So God will do everything it takes for you to be saved. Like, I don't know. Let me keep quiet on this. But some of you might receive the word of God right now as we speak, as we are going through these Bible st studies. Some of you might not receive it right now. Some of you might receive it many years from now. Because God will do everything for you to be saved. Okay, um, it's our time is far spent. All right, let me see what Ara said um, before I end the live streaming and um, we're gonna pray. Say also, Roman says that God's power is evident in nature, but how would people know it is God? It is the God of Abraham. Could you explain that better? Like, sorry. Okay, like um, it says in the Bible that for, for the unbelievers that don't believe, they have no reason to not believe because God's power is evident in nature. Yes. How do they know that the God of Abraham and not like um, Allah or something else? Yes. yes. All right. So that is powerful. Two things I want to say. Um, it's 901. Let us pray. I'm going to communicate that after. Um, thank you, Ara, for that last contribution. We have to stay, stick to time. This 2023, we need to stick to time. So, uh, Lord, we bless you. We give you glory. Let's let's magnify the Lord, actually. Let's magnify the Lord. Let's thank him for the utterance of his word um, that gives life. Let us um, bless him. Let us pray that um, the Lord Almighty will breathe his word upon us. In this few minutes that we have gone into his word, let Lord Jesus change our lives. Begin to bless the Lord. I want you to pray. For some of you who are not sure of your fate, who are not sure of your salvation, I want you to ask God to restore you to him. Ask for rededication. We ask that you rededicate your life to him right now. For those who are questioning their salvation, we I'm praying, pray with me and pray along with me right now. Just ask God to give you um to give you to reveal himself to you. He could be, he can, he can, he, he will re reveal himself to you. He will reveal himself to you. True people, true his word, true, 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 true his power, true miracles, true testimonies. He will reveal himself to you. He is ready doing that. So ask for the eyes to see. Ask for the eyes to see. He says, Ara said it. Ara said that the power of God is revealed in in all of creature. All of creature reveals his power. So ask for the eyes to see. So God is being revealed to us. Ask for the eyes to see, the years to year, the mind to understand. Ask for the eyes to see, the years to year, the mind to understand, to understand the glory that is in God, to understand of the, the truth that is in, the, in, in, in creature. He said, he said, all of creature, all of creation declares his glory. Begin to ask God to sustain you. If you are giving your life to Jesus Christ, just say the words that, Lord Jesus, I accept you into my life. I know that you are my Lord and Savior. I commit my soul, my body, my spirit in, unto you, Lord Jesus. Lead me, O oh Lord, to eternity, O oh Lord, in you. 
in Jesus' name. If you are rededicating your life, just ask God to give you strength. It should give you eyes that see, ears that hear, and mind that understands in the name of jesus lord jesus let us understand the love that you have for us let us understand that we all have been elected to be children of abraham through believing in jesus in jesus most powerful name we have prayed amen amen in jesus name so i'm going to stop streaming now thank you so much for joining us people that watch this later on